This is a short video to discuss why do people think Anthem is so bad and is it really that bad? I guess the the short tagline is, is, for this video will be, is Anthem really that bad? My personal opinion is going to be fairly obvious. I don't think it is. I think it is early. I think it is young for a game, but it's an MMORPG and it's not shallow, easy to complete or lacking in gameplay. It may be lacking in endgame, I've not got there yet, but it's not lacking in storyline, it's not lacking in engaging missions, and it's not lacking in variety of equipment. There are four different javelins, there are many, many additional types of guns, and there is an engaging storyline with characters you actually care about, and characters you actually get to know and work with while playing the game. There have been some complaints that the game is unfinished, and I would say that it is unfinished because it's a live service game, and as much as we do or don't like them, MMORPGs are never finished when they come out. And this isn't mean to say that they've got bug fixes, every game has bug fixes these days. What it is is there's more stuff to come. Now, yes, this is the acceptable part of the game, but is the game playable as it is? Yes. Does it offer more than 20 hours worth of gameplay? very easily without doing any grinding or any repeating just working through the story missions there is more than 20 hours there I've heard people say that there's less than 10 hours but I'm being perfectly honest with you I've been playing it longer than that and I'm not even halfway through the story mission I'm level 14 you, when you've completed the story mission you're probably something like level 20 level 30 I don't know yet I've not got there I'm not even halfway through I've only got two javelins. Now, as for this lack of equipment and lack of stuff to collect and lack of stuff to do, let me show you what I've actually managed to accumulate so far. It's almost relatively amusing that people are saying, oh, the loading times have improved, they did a patch a couple of days ago, that has really improved. Okay, let's start with this, shall we? So, here's one of my two javelins. Now, I can have additional loadouts for it. I can save new loadouts. This is an interceptor. What I can do is I can change the interceptor. I can have a new loadout. Say if I want it to be a lightning build or a flame build and so on. And, you know, you can make as many loadouts as you want for each javelin. Pretty cool. I, my power level is 148. That's uncommon. I think that'll go all the way up to epic eventually. Um, I get to rare when I get all the stuff. I replaced most of my equipment. And... Here is the amount of equipment you can replace in your javelin. Each one of these is a different weapon system, or affects a different weapon system, or changes the way that a weapon works with a weapon system, or the amount of ammo you've got, shield reinforcement, all this sort of thing. And these are the number of them, and I've been recycling these, and these are the ones I've got in the last few levels. All of these change the way this javelin works. They change the way the robotic suit works. They change the way that it operates. They're all randomly generated, and each one of them has four or five different stats. As you can see, each one of these changes four or five different stats. You get five to f six of these each time you do a mission. You have to sit down and sort out which ones are suitable for your javelin, which ones are suitable for the weapons you're going to carry. And I'm not just talking about these weapons. These are the guns. They are boring. I will be honest with you. They all look pretty much the same, but you get a lot of them. And they are of a variety of of quality. And you generally tend to try and carry the best ones. This one's an explosive sniper rifle, for example. The ammunition explodes on contact with the target. It does roughly three to 4,000 damage. It's a very, very, very good gun. This one's also very good. This is greatest kicking power, but lowers the rate of fire in an assault rifle class. So this really hits hard, even though it doesn't look like it does. Called a hammerhead. V fantastic rifle. And although they all look pretty much the same, I think that's to save on memory for the, for the graphics rendering, they do have a massive different effects. Every single thing has three to four effects. Every gun, every piece of armor, and it takes a lot to work out which one you need. This is an incredibly in-depth system. These are the strike systems, so you have to pick, this is a main st a strike system, you have to pick one of these. Each one of these has a different effect. These two are obviously the same, these three are the same, but each different type does something different. This one, for example, Plasma Star, Powerfully Charged Throwing Star. So, 
when people say that there isn't much equipment in this game and there isn't much depth to kitting out your javelin, I really, really don't understand that. I have two different javelins and they take completely different weapon systems and they behave completely differently when using them. They're the opposite ends of the scale. One of them is this, which looks like the Hulkbuster from uh, Iron Man. As you can see, it's a relatively um, robust looking thing. It's basically armor plating. It has no shield and uses a completely different, it uses basically heavy assault weapons. So it's got a railgun and a flamethrower, I believe, on the other side. Let's see what the other one is. Ordnance launcher. Oh, high explosive. So it launch it's got high explosive and a support gear, I believe, is a shield, yeah. So a high explosive, defensive shield, and a railgun. Completely different style of play to the melee one that I just showed you a minute ago that bounces all over the battlefield, killing things with a sniper rifle from distance or slashing them up with a blade. Um I don't get it when people say this is a bad game. It doesn't... I'm not saying it's a great game. It's it's as good as Destiny 2. It has a better storyline than Destiny 2. It has intriguing characters. And it has, you know, a decent world. Yeah, the shop needs improving. The number of quests and game apparently needs improving. Don't know, I haven't got there. But this is not a bad game. It looks beautiful. It plays well. And... It genuinely seems to have a lot of character to it. It's not the same as any other game. It has so many unique features. I don't really understand why people are just going, this is really bad, this is really awful, this is really awful. I have all of these things I can do. Um, I'll just go into a bit of free play to show you the flying around. There's been a little bit of a change in the way some of this works. So the free play itself still remains the same. You just fly into the world. The loading times have improved quite drastically, which is quite pretty good. I mean, there's still a bit of loading time, but it's probably about 50% of what it was before the patch. I believe the patch was out on Friday, which would have been March the 1st before filming this video. And it did improve loading times quite significantly on March the 1st. Remember, this is the first time I've gone into the Javelin. The next time I go in and, f and go into this, a lot of this will be cached somewhere, so it'll be a lot quicker. But this isn't the two to three minute loading times we were having before. This is 20 to 40 seconds. Much more acceptable, much better to deal with, and much, much easier. I gotta say, this is still a little long, but it's got better. And there uh, the game crashes. That is, of course, something else the game does. It crashes occasionally. Yeah, I still get crashes from World of Warcraft, and that game's very, very old. I still get crashes from... Ooh. I actually got to say, there are a few games that have never crashed on me. Um, going to be honest, Elite Dangerous is one that very, very rarely crashes these days. It occasionally will have a server disconnection, but this game already has more content than Elite Dangerous in terms of equipment and in terms of ways of making your ship better. I know that sounds crazy. Elite Dangerous is not that greatly detailed. If I'm comparing it to an existing MMO, I'm going to compare it to Destiny, which has probably a similar variety of types of weapons, but not models. Models, certainly more variety of weapons. Character classes, probably slightly more on Destiny 2. There's slightly more variety. But is this game a shell? No, it's it's a fairly well structured thing. It's fairly well set up. It's available to be played, and it's 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 workable. And it is really fun multiplayer. Now, anything can be fun multiplayer. Yep, there there is the old argument about a paper bag with poo in it is fun if you're with your friends. This is true. Anything is fun with friends. Runes, old school RuneScape's fun with friends. Asheron's Cool's fun with friends. Minecraft is fun with friends. Minecraft is hella boring alone. I've got to say this. I have never been a fan of playing solo Minecraft. It has never, ever interested me. The game just doesn't seem to have anything for me solo player. So, let's have a quick look at the way the game looks at the moment. So, I run a 1060 with an i5 with 16 gig of RAM. Um, it's a, The i5 is a 7400. It is not... 
a large processor. I'm also recording this at the same time and as you can see the environment, the graphics, the volumetric fog, everything is beautiful and it looks amazing and I've got to say I don't think many other games come close to looking like this and yeah this six years in development a lot of it was spent doing this part of the game and this bit of the game is the best bit of the game the combat is amazing the third person combat is incredible the flying around in the suit like Iron Man is also incredible and the skimming the tops of the waterfalls so you can continue flying makes the whole thing worthwhile Okay, there's a mission over there. I might finish these guys off though because they have something to collect. So this is a high powered machine gun. I hit him with a rail gun, that was certainly overkill. Haha! <laughs> you see I hit the tree there? Oh. I need to think about my let roll out my um my loadout. It's not very good even for fighting this number of people. See these are pretty low level and they're really just cannon fodder. Nothing dangerous has shown up. They're not really gonna be able to impact me. Right, let's go do this world event. See, and these are like um destiny when you're out exploring, you get world events. So I'm here to help stop these sentinels from getting killed by these creatures. There we go. Kill the wyverns. Whoa, another one over there. You need to get to that sentinel. So he needs saving, so let's save him. Great, thanks. Looks like they brought friends. More company on the way. So that's a little collectible. I'm out of weapon. Oops. That's that explosive one. Sorry about that, somebody at the door. You've got an angry Ursix to deal with. Be careful. Okay, so here's a decent mob. Got 
Well. Run. Yep, I do have this. Out of ammo. You need to get to that sentinel. Alright. Down. Thank goodness. Nice work, freelancer. You're a lifesaver. See? And that is one of the small missions. And these are random things you pick up just flying around the outside world. You have these, you have story missions, you have strongholds which are survive and invade missions like a dungeon. You have all of this type of stuff. And there are a variety of different gameplay and playing them in different suits turns them into different styles of gameplay. This is a very much a hulking, walking around heavy artillery tank mode. Then there's a DPS mode, there's a magic style mode which uses elemental magic. And then, on top of all of that, you have the uh, light melee type character as well. Which I'm really hoping they'll bring melee weapons in for instead of just having to spam V the whole time to do the melee attack. Which is pretty honestly one of its best assaults. I really, really hope this game catches on. I really think it's been given such a, such a raw deal. It hasn't really been given the time, devotion or the reviews it's deserved. This is a positive review because I've been playing the game and I'm enjoying it. And it's easily, easily on par with Destiny 2. And I really don't understand why people think that this is somehow a failure or a disaster of a game. It's fun. It has a completely unique transport system. It has a very unique and fun world. And it has an incredible lore, which is just easier to understand and better placed than most other games. It's just a great game. Thank you for watching. Please uh, rate, comment, and subscribe, and uh, hopefully uh, enjoy the game if you try it.